everyone. I'm Elisa Vitti, founder of Flow Living, the Flow Living Hormone Center, and the author of Woman Code, which continues to be a bestseller on Amazon, um, and the creator of the My Flow Functional Medicine Period Tracking app. And I am excited today because this is going to be a really fun um, Facebook Live. I have a lot of my favorite products. I'm going to show you things that I love to use. Um, you know, when when PMS happens. I'm, I, I also wanted to do this one because, you know, <clears throat> I think so often for us as women, we think of our health as this per destination of like reaching perfection, and then once we get there, that's it. Um, but in my experience of of living in a female body <laughs> the the constant changing nature of our hormones is something to be um maintained supported observed and then the ongoing conversation that my body's having with me about the symptoms that might crop up from time to time are opportunities for me to dive in a little bit more around self-care so I'm really excited to share with you my personal little tweaks and hacks that I use when I kind of start moving in the direction of feeling symptomatic in the luteal phase, which isn't very often, but when it does happen, I like I'm all over it. <laughs> so I want to give you all my all over it technique. So I want to hear where you're, you know, from where are you uh, viewing me today? I'd love to know where you are um, watching from. So let me know where, what state, what country. And I also want to know if you've got some PMS today. Let me know what if you have PMS and let me know what your symptoms are because I want to make sure I address all of that. And as always, our conversations on Facebook Live are very interactive. I'm going to be answering your questions, so start thinking of them. Hello, Bethany from San Diego. Hello, Shannon from Chicago. Hello, Farah from Los Angeles. Stephanie saying this is timely. Bethany saying this is very timely. So let me know. Connecticut. Um, uh, Kate is in Miami and in the menstrual phase right now. Nigeria, Houston, Texas. Cycle synced. Woo! Southern California, Texas. The Flow Sisterhood continues to expand. <laughs> Pennsylvania. Yes. Missouri, cool. Hi, Missouri. The tropics. That's a that's a sexy and mysterious statement. <laughs> um, Dubai, so cool. Dubai, Maryland. Um, oh, hi, Kristen. You haven't been able to make it live, so I'm so glad you're here too. Yeah, it is fun. <laughs> um, let me know uh, what. If you're having PMS t right now and what you're dealing with, and then of course, in general, what is your flavor of PMS um, so that I can get in there. South Africa, so amazing. Oh, you know, it just reminds me, I remember 20 years ago being all alone with my period suffering and feeling like I was the only woman on the planet who was you know struggling to have a healthy body and to feel normal and it's just such a joy to be in community with you that we're here coming together as women there's a place for us to come together at the flow living hormone center and that we can share the information and the resources to not feel alone to not try to have to figure it out on your own and to get results that is it feel better so it's just it's just really nice to to be with you all today um, keep letting me know what your symptoms are what's going on with your luteal phase we're gonna dive in um, I think I want to start a little bit with <laughs> Kala Kayla Sanderson saying her her symptom is craziness I think with a wink wink over there. Um, <laughs> I think mood swings are a real deal. Ooh, Anna Maria from Romania. Toronto from Marie. So cool. Yeah, qu quick to anger. Mm -hmm. Irrit we'll call that irritability, you know. <laughs> uh, 
uh, quick to anger sounds like you're judging yourself for being irritable. But yes, you may be angry. Lots of cramps. I mean, I think that the first thing I want to just say for the record, because if you if this is the first time you're listening, um, you know, this is something you need to know. And if it's if it's something if you've heard me before, you'll know this already. But just in case, just because we can't say it enough, uh, since our sex education has been so lacking, right? So um, PMS, although it is common, right? Although it's very common to have PMS, and I'm sure you and all of your friends and relatives have lamented about having PMS at some point together, the, the reality is that it is not what your body is designed to do for you. Right, your hormones by design are meant to keep you feeling energized and balanced and happy and healthy all month long and equally so in the week leading up to your period. So this is the, f I just want, I just, we just need to like let that sink in. And there's so many pieces of mythology that kind of, um, make us not think that this is even a possibility, right? So, you know, from all the conditioning we get that, you know, like it's suffering is part of the deal of being a woman and, you know, pain is absolutely part of your, your cycle and childbirth and everything else. Um, you know, that you're hormonal and that means something very different even though everyone has hormones, but as a woman it means you're gonna like be crazy and, um, so, you know, there are these myths that kind of keep us believing things that aren't tr scientifically, biologically based, and therefore we then don't change our behavior or take action, when really all that PMS is is an imbalance of estrogen and progesterone. That's it. And when your body is presenting you with those symptoms, it's just, she's just trying to like dial you direct, like, hey honey, we're having a little bloating this month. I need a little bit more XYZ food and XYZ lifestyle changes. That's it. That's all she's trying to say to you. Instead, we, in, we get these symptoms and we think, oh, my body is at, I'm at war with her. You know, like this is, we, we, we totally misinterpret the, the conversation because we don't have this information. So, um, hi, Pia from Denmark. So cool. Insomnia. We're going to talk about that today. Um, so just wanted to state for the record that I would love it from now on if when you get a symptom, you think of it like you're getting a phone call from your, your uterus and your ovaries and she's just being like, hey, we need a little extra support, a little extra nutrition, a little extra lifestyle shifts this month because what, what has been taking place, let's say over the last 30 days, has resulted in this symptom. And so if you would just make a little switch, we could get right back on track for you. So I would love for you to have that as your big takeaway, because today we're talking about little hacks and little ways in which you can tip things back in the right direction when things go off course. Um, so I wanna start with some of the symptoms that I get. I mean, I'm reading all your symptoms and I wanna tell you like, if, when I get a little off, what happens to me? in the luteal phase, um, I will get typically some insomnia, um, an occasional little, like some extra blackheads or, and, you know, it just depends. I mean, it's hard for me to put fatigue right now because <laughs> I have a toddler and that makes sleeping through the night impossible. <laughs> so I would put fatigue in a separate category. Um, but I would definitely say the third place where I might get, if I'm going to go have any PMS, it might be a little, you know, irritability, some moodiness. So those would be like the three places where I notice I will have my first line of vulnerability pop up when, if and when that's coming up for me. Um, so, and since having a daughter, I would say the, the, the first year postpartum is a whole other conversation, but the second year... I have been having to be, you know, doubling down on my cycle thinking protocol and because of the sleep deprivation that is part of being a new mom, I've had more occurrences of a, these little PMS flare-ups 
this year than in the past 20 years because of the sleep issue, which really does impact endocrine function as a whole. So I'm using more of my hacks now, and I'm happy to share them with you because they work. Um, so let's start with, um, and, and all of these serve a lot of multi-purpose, and I share this with you because you know, I don't, I want you to know I'm a real menstruating woman with real hormones that I really take care of, just like I want you to take care of. So, and ooh, I f almost forgot. At the end, I'm gonna share something really special with you, so make sure you stay on. Um, so, and I share that with you because I want you to know that you can do it. I do it all the time, you can do it too. It's not so complicated. All right, so let's start first with um, one of my favorite, Things. You know, I think, I think as I'm reading through all of your symptoms here, and thank you all for sharing, um, I'd love to hear while I'm showing you my hacks what yours are. So let me know what you use to kind of manage these symptoms. Even if you don't think it's the thing that you should be using, I'd love to know what you are doing. Like, are you using, you know, Midol? Are you using, I don't know, um, you know, what kind of junk food are you craving? What, what is it that you're eating? Because I want to kind of help you with some swaps as well. So let me know what you're doing. Um, and uh, and we'll, we'll suss those out as well. But as I've been looking at all of your, <gasps> wait, someone just wrote, junk food, Taylor, laziness. You're not lazy, honey. <laughs> you're just tired. Um, uh, so, you know, I, just looking at all of these symptoms, I'm just scrolling through. I mean, PMS is pretty, pretty straightforward. Um, so let's start with some of the common things. So we've got, you know, everybody's been writing in. So you've got bloating, insomnia, breakouts, mood swings, you know, the mind going everywhere. So I kind of wanted to bring my best little hacks and products that, um, and I'm just, I'm loving what you guys are writing for what you eat. Um, Salty foods, junk food, um, popcorn and french fries. <laughs> I'm laughing because I just love the way the body will get any, any way it can what it needs. Chocolate, french fries, poutine. Oh, no me. I was in Montreal several years ago and somehow managed not to eat poutine and I am so upset. Anyway, <laughs> someday. Uh, ibuprofen and chocolate cake from Bethany. Um, Yep, I love this. This is so fun. Uh, ice cream, chips, popcorn, chocolate, uh, s salt and vinegar chips, cookies, peanut butter, any food, literally anything. <laughs> so fun. Okay, I love talking about period. Okay, so let's start with <laughs> Bell Ray. You guys are cracking me up. And all the food in the world. <laughs> We should have like a PMS pajama party someday. That would be really fun. Um, oh, Beth, you're good. Raw chocolate and avocados. Smart. That's good. All right. Let me tell you. Let, let's go to all the popcorn, salty, sweet, crunchy cravers. Okay. Because that's a real thing. I get that sometimes. And, you know, you can't, you can't not do it. Um, so one of you wrote in... Um, Jackson's Honest Brand Chips. Those are the best. If you're going to eat potato chips, they do have an organic line. It's hard to find, um, but they are non-GMO. So if you are going to have an indulgence and you want potato chips, those are, you guys want a, P a PMS PJ party? We'll, we'll do it. We'll do it. Um, we could just sleep the whole time because <laughs> we're all tired and cranky. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, if you want chips and you want something salty and crunchy, I would say those are a great brand. But here's my secret weapon. Boom. I'm sure this is backwards because I don't have all the fancy camera thing. Um, this is purely Elizabeth, plain, or the original uh, ancient grain granola. This is what it has in it. Gluten-free, orga everything's organic. Gluten-free oats coconut sugar, coconut oil, sunflower seeds, puffed amaranth, millet flakes, quinoa flakes, chia seeds, cinnamon, salt. It's salty. It's actually, I would say, a little bit more salty than sweet. Um, you can just eat it out of the bag. 
Why do I like this more than potato chips? Well, frankly, because of um, the you know the oat, the oat factor is going to have a mood stabilizing benefit to you. It's going to give you some B vitamins that are going to help you with the luteal phase. The cinnamon is going to be blood sugar stabilizing. The coconut sugar is not real, you know, blood sugar destabilizing. The coconut oil, you know, it has six grams of fat, for example, for a third of a cup. So it's not this low fat blood sugar spiking kind of granola. I, I love this. I ate this all through my pregnancy. Um, I think this is a really good healthy snack. Um, this is the only granola of all the granolas that I eat. Uh, the chia, the flax, it helps pull out, you know, helps you um, have better bowel movements. It, it, it's a great, it's like, I mean, she should just rename this like PMS food. <laughs> so I love this. Um, oh, Teresa, there's nothing like this in Portugal. You can make this yourself. You, it's so easy to make granola. You just, you know, get your oats, soak them overnight. Um, you can, you know, mix all these ingredients together and then bake it off on a cookie sheet and then you have your, your bag of oatmeal, your uh, granola. So easy to do, okay, if you don't have the specific one. Thank you for bringing that up. I for, I, I'm remembering that we have women from all over the world and you're right, you may not be able to get this brand, but the ingredients that I listed are things you can buy and mix together all up, you know, mix it together, put it on a cookie sheet, bake it off and go to town. You know, I give you permission. I'd much rather you, ha quote unquote, have too much of this than have just so much potato chips or popcorn um, because even though they're giving you salt and fat, they're not giving you as much micronutrient bang for your buck. These will, okay? So from flax to essential fatty acids to medium chain triglycerides to you know all sorts of good things. So that's m one of my favorite swaps, okay? All right, um, do, do I have a healthy, tasty cookie recipe? Mm, I'm sure I do. I will, I will think of one for you. Um, so, okay, I wanted to talk to you about the insomnia piece next. Oh, the name of it again is Purely Elizabeth's Original. Okay, she has a lot of other brands, but Purely Elizabeth is that. Oh, I might as well do this first because this is just for the, for the chocolate people. This is the chocolate one. Who, H-U, stands for human, um, time, as in human, time to get back to real human food for real humans is kind of their brand, which I love. Um, pretty... Like, I haven't found a better um, formulation of chocolate. And they have a lot of different flavors. Um, it just has organic cacao, organic coconut sugar, organic coconut butter, and sea salt. I haven't been able to find a cleaner bar of chocolate, you know, so I love this. And it tastes really good. You know, I've tried them all that are, the you know, stevia sweetened or... Um, whatever different different things and this one it like you know you feel like you're having chocolate it's delicious um, so again if you're not in the states and you can't access this you know look for chocolate that isn't sweetened with real sugar because that real sugar is what's going to cause you to start to spiral out when you're um, trying to get yourself uh, balanced all right okay and eating chocolate, let's not forget, is one of the richest sources of dietary magnesium that you can consume per serving, more so than any other food. So this is not just a, oh, eat this. This is like, no, you should be eating chocolate the week before your period because it's containing a lot of magnesium, which you need to help you with all sorts of electrolyte balance and hormone balance. And this is a great one to, to have. And if you can't find this one, make a good product switch um, with that, uh, with your chocolate. Try to get away from actual cane sugar. Okay, now I wanna talk to you about insomnia. Because it's a funny thing being sleep deprived. Jessica's saying that makes so much sense. Yes, it does. Eat chocolate, chocolate is good for you. <laughs> um, you can make your own chocolate truffles. I've done that before where I'll like 
in my Vitamix, I'll, I'll soak some dates in some boiling water and puree them up with raw cacao and some um, uh, coconut oil and just roll it up a little truffle, boom, like pr pretty easy, three ingredients. I'm not really a big baker. I, I like, um, you know, that kind of a thing. So <clears throat> anyway, I wanna talk to you about what I do to help me with any insomnia, because I was going to—I was saying it's, it's a funny thing being sleep deprived chronically for an extended period of time as a new mom. Anybody here have kids or is a recent new mom or is dealing with some sleep deprivation due to children or stressful situation? Let me know. But while you're letting me know, what I'll tell you is that the more sleep deprived you are, the more it affects your adrenals and so it actually makes you have more of an insomnia kind of response because your cortisol patterns be shift a little bit and you feel like more of a night owl so it's a kind of a vicious cycle and and one that i am really actively all over because i know how i've ha i've dealt with adrenal fatigue before and i i don't want to go back there so elaine you have a 15 month old love to you love to you mama the struggle is real and the joy is real, but let's not forget the sleep deprivation part. So I, um, I have been talking for a while in the blog about, you know, the exposure to LED lighting being uh, a real problem. And if you want to learn more, there are a couple of blog posts that we have about that. But essentially, anytime you're on your screen, anytime you're you know, watching TV or on your phone, you know, for like the two hours leading up to bedtime, let's say anytime after eight o'clock, frankly, because your body cortisol pattern wise is trying to um, s settle down when the sun goes down. Uh, if you're s exposing yourself to this LED lighting, it's disrupting the melatonin patterns of the body and will keep you awake and really start to affect your hormones pretty dramatically and make you have insomnia. This whole phenomenon of binge watching shows is actually something that um, is, a, is part of the design of TV shows in general. It's a perfect combination of stimulating your adrenal response while you're watching the show. If it's, if it's like suspenseful or emotionally dramatic or stressful, you actually have a hormonal reaction to that that makes you need to know what happens or stay engaged with the, the storyline, coupled with the exposure to the LED lighting. So if you've ever found yourself where you're like up till four in the morning, binge watching a show till you get to the very last episode and thinking, good Lord, it's four in the morning, that's not because you really wanted to stay up till four in the morning, it's because your, your body is being hormonally manipulated in a very like on purpose way for you to be watching. So it's really important to protect yourself against that. And I was really looking into this and I, I, um, I've, you know, of course I've recommended you guys install the little blue light blocker on your, you know, you can download that free software. But then I also wanted to take it a step further for myself and I'm just opening up my little, my little fun box here. So you know what I'm doing, opening up my box of this, um, and I'm taking them out. I keep them in the case so they're nice and clean all the time. They're going to look really cute. I'm going to look a little orange. I mean, how adorable am I in these glasses? <laughs> so these are um, from the Swanwick brand, Swanwick. Uh, they're also lovingly referred to as Swannies. You can get these on Amazon pretty much anywhere. And I s will start wearing these at like six o'clock if I'm still on my computer um, or certainly if I'm gonna watch TV at night, like I wear these. If I look, at, even if I wanna just quickly check my phone for something I don't want to look at this you know super bright light you know in the middle of the night when I'm dark you're ever like in your bedroom and it's dark you've shut all the lights off and then you like just check your phone for a second and that bright light it's like it's like a flash bulb going off um, so anyway I'm pretty devoted to wearing these now because they help so I'm going to take them off now. Um, I do download the blue blocking, blue light blocking, but it's not enough. 
in my experience, you're also going to need something like this, or you can buy one that can cover your screen. I think the reason why I opted for something like this is that I can move from screen to screen and not have to think about, oh, do I have the cover for that one on? Um, but you know, we evolved um, to hormonally to respond to sunlight, moonlight, and firelight. And that's it. So all this artificial lighting definitely has an impact on our ability to sleep and get proper rest. So this, these little, these little glasses, tremendous improvement in any sort of luteal phase insomnia. I love them and I think they're a great investment. Um, they're not that expensive. I, I think they're like 40 bucks. Um, so it's really good. And yes, I'm not, you know, whatever there, some of you are talking about different blue blocking glasses. There's, you know, any brand that you want to get, as long as it, it talks about that they have the actual right lens and it's doing the actual bl blocking of the light 100%, then that is great. Um, and yes, Rachel is saying that you've been wearing them at work. You can wear them all day. I think that's my next step is to just start wearing them all day. Um, but I think that's awesome, Rachel. Super, super good. And yes, Beth, you're bringing up the point, which is um, that you need to think about switching off your devices at a certain time, like cutting yourself off and having that discipline to say, you know what, at 9.30, it's, it's a little reading light maybe, <laughs> or, or it's just moonlight, or it's just not, you know, no, no stimulation from devices. And that's hard to do, especially if you have a little addiction to that being your way of shutting your brain off, so to speak, at night. So this is just one little hack. There's so many things to dive into here, but I just wanted to share that one with you. Then I wanted to share another thing that I just don't live without in general, um, but certainly to help with, like this is like a double whammy, like um, insomnia and bloating. You know what I'm gonna say, magnesium magnesium and it you know this is a glycinate form um, the brand is not important here it's just magnesium glycinate you know that supplement is so beneficial to take during the luteal phase especially to take a little extra so you know I might only take a single dose throughout the rest of the month but I would take a double dose personally um, you know during the luteal phase just to offset you know, any of the uh, bloating or any of the potential stress impact. Um, it's a wonderful supplement because, you know, your body is being depleted actively of magnesium on a pretty consistent basis between coffee and stress and sleep deprivation and working out, you know, there's and any medication that you're taking, there's just so many opportunities for you to not have enough magnesium. And it's an important piece of, you know, keeping our hormones balanced and, and avoiding some of the emotional and physical, um, you know, symptoms of PMS. So I just think it's a universal good thing to have. Another thing I really love for insomnia and stress management is a little essential oil of lavender. Um, you know, I will like douse my bedroom in this. I, I don't necessarily apply it to my body, although sometimes I will. I'll, you know, sprinkle it on my pillows and my sheets um, just to kind of get the room, um, you know, have that aromatherapy that is, I find it extremely soothing and relaxing and um, find it really helpful to help myself kind of shift gears and, and relax and it's a mood booster and it's great. And you can, and there are other essential oils you can use to help with irritability too, like essential oil of orange, very, very mood enhancing and positive. Um, all right, um, another hack that I have for you that I love is fennel tea. Now this is just a brand that I, I happen to have in my cabinet. I'm a tea, I'm a tea connoisseur, uh, well, herbal tea connoisseur. Uh, I have a collection since, you know, I've been caffeine free for 20 years. So you can imagine I have like quite the tea collection that doesn't have caffeine. Um, I love this brand, it happens to be called Love Organic. Um, I discovered this uh, in Montreal, actually, on that same trip where I did not eat the poutine, silly, silly lady that I am. And, uh, and at a little shop in Montreal, it's a French company, and they have a fennel and anise tea that I really like for 
bloating um, during the luteal phase. It's really effective and it also really helps with digestion. So if you have discomfort after eating and you feel bloated, which sometimes can happen in tandem, this fennel anise tea is delicious. It's a little sweet. It's very herbaceous. Um, you can drink it all throughout the day, morning, noon, and night. You can't have too much. Um, it's so, so good. Um, Belle is asking about the popcorn with coconut oil. I'm going to throw the question back to you. I want you to make the observation and the connection for yourself. If the popcorn is causing you any sort of intestinal discomfort, oftentimes uh, popcorn, you know, can make you more bloated. It's a hard um, food to digest. So, and if it's not, you know, of course you're saying organic GMO free popcorn, certainly, um, but just watch your, your body's response to it. I know that like that's for me a definite no-no food uh, pretty much all the time, but definitely during the luteal phase um, that I really can't break it down easily. And I noticed that it, it decreases the transit time of my bowel movement. So if I eat popcorn, I feel like I have I will tend more towards not having my bowel movement on schedule. So there's something about that that's I, that I have noticed is a little bit of an odd reaction for me. So I just want you to observe for you. It could have the opposite effect for you. It could give you increased transit time. You're having more bowel movements and you feel really good. You know, some of this is bio-individual. Um, uh, someone's asking um, about the tea. It's called Love Organic, L-O-V, Love Organic. Um, and you, the website is love, L-O-V, dash, organic.com. Um, so Jessica's saying, yeah, popcorn makes you feel bloated. That's pretty much what I've heard from women once I pose the question to them is that actually they don't digest it well. Um, you know, popcorn's a tricky thing. Corn in general, you know, if it's fresh off the cob, it's a vegetable. But if it's, once it's dried, it then is referred to as a grain. So, you know... It, in a perfect world, you'd be you'd be, you know, processing a grain properly and soaking it and you know doing it doing it uh, doing right by your digestive digestive process by trying to remove as much phytic acid as possible. So that's what I would say. Um, I I would think about just observing yourself and if it works for you, then sure have some popcorn, but it it might not be. Um, <clears throat> Okay, and then I want to talk about sort of the checklist that I run through now that, you know, you know about the MyFlow tracker and if you're using it, you know, you're seeing patterns occurring around your symptoms and you're learning through the app, you know, <clears throat> what these symptoms mean and where they're coming from and what the functional medicine causes are of them and if they're recurring for you, kind of some guidelines as to what you should be doing. But I always have a pretty straightforward kind of like mental checklist <clears throat> if I have a symptom at all. Like if all of a sudden I'm like, oh no, I'm bloated or, oh, I forgot one thing. Sorry, before the checklist, I, <laughs> I was like, is that all of the stuff I brought? No, there's one more magical thing. So breakouts are certainly a part of PMS <clears throat> um, and estrogen dominance. And, uh, and as someone who was a former acne sufferer, I'm always very sensitive about watching my skin and making sure it's really healthy and taking really good care of it. So <clears throat> I, I've, you know, really love good skincare, you know, so what does that mean? Good skincare is gentle cleansers, um, chemical exfoliants made from like lactic acid, which is very gentle, um, and then lots of essential, lots of oil-based hydration. You know, if I were to look at sort of like a good sort of pr process of, of keeping your skin healthy. So I was really thrilled to find this product because it has, um, a whole bunch of things in it that I think are fantastic from um, it's majorly hydrating oh here here's what it is before I keep talking about it. so it's it's from the Marie Veronique line um, which is 
right now my absolute favorite skincare line that I only discovered this February. I am obsessed with it. Um, this is called their Intensive Repair Serum, since it's going to look backwards on the screen. Um, and it's a combination of B vitamins and hyaluronic acid and a little bit of, um, what am I just reading it here? Uh, is it lactic acid in here? Uh, radish root, apple cider vinegar, lactic acid, yep, um, carrot oil, I mean, and, and probiotics. I mean, it's almost safe. It's almost something that you could eat, you know? <laughs> um, and, you know, so I don't necessarily put this all over my face because it is an intensive serum and it's, my skin is, you know, I don't need all that kind of exfoliation. But if I'm getting, let's say, I'll notice if, if this is coming up for me and I get like some increased pore size on my nose, my T-zone, you know, I'll just put a little bit on my blackhead areas where if I get those and this like shrinks them shrinks the pores right back down reduces any inflammation addresses any breakout because it has that chemical exfoliant of the lactic acid so it's just resurfacing the skin it's unbelievable so <clears throat> you know that's what's working for me right now I know everybody's a little different but this I really love this and think it's worth giving a try for sure um, all right, back to the checklist. And thanks, Denise, for the best app ever. That's so great to hear. Yeah, I was recently, a really funny story, actually. I got a call from someone in the media, like major, major magazine kind of thing. And we had this very, like, formal interview, and I, you know, for this article about, you know, apps. And, um, and it was very formal, and I, I, you know, I did my best. And then I said, you know, I'm just wondering, um, how you heard about me and my my app over here and uh, and she kind of let me ask a few questions and then she goes listen in full disclosure you know I I accidentally stumbled upon your app in the app store and I have been an avid fan and user and I, I think it's the I love it you know I just think every woman needs to know about it and I was like <laughs> Thank you. That's so great. So I thank you for all of your comments. Um, thank you for all of your wonderful reviews on the App Store. And, you know, all of that is helping other women discover the app for themselves. So thank you. And please um, keep them coming. We really love getting your feedback. Um, the name of that skincare line from, for Alex, that's Marie, like Marie, Veronique. Um, so... Yes. Okay. So let's talk about this checklist. So, you know, I use the app. I keep track of any symptoms that come up. The name of the app is myflowtracker.com. Myflotracker.com. And when I go through my the app, which is the app that I created, um, you know, I keep track of any symptoms that I'm having and remind myself why I'm having them. And then I just do a little mental checklist. I say, okay, so if it's insomnia, um, oh, thanks ladies. <laughs> thanks for sharing with all your friends. That's, thank you. Um, so I just run through like a little checklist. Okay, let's say I just pick a symptom and I'll say, okay, so I'm struggling with insomnia. So first thing I say is, yes, I know I have had a, recently had a child and sleep deprivation has had a real effect on me and how bad is the insomnia this week leading up to my period? Is it on a scale of one to 10, um, you know, kind of a thing. And then I'll say, I'll look back. So I kind of, aside from this like life, phase of life moment that I'm having with new motherhood, um, I'll say, okay, so what else did I do? You know, did I forget to wear my blue blocking, sun, blue light blocking glasses? Um, you know, did I have any extra stress that might have depleted me from magnesium? You know, how's my diet on the cycle syncing protocol? Um, you know, that kind of a thing, right? Where I sort of like run through a checklist, like what, what did I miss? You know, have I, have I moved my body enough this week? Um, I kind of just do a quick little check-in because my default is never to think that my body is screwing up. My default is to take immediate 
ownership and responsibility and say, what, what did, didn't I do or what did I do that messed with my body's elegantly genius hormonal balancing design system? Because by design, I and you and we all are meant to be hormonally, hormonally balanced. So what did I do to interfere with that? Sometimes unconsciously, sometimes knowingly, what did I do? And then I'll go and pick the hacks that make the most sense to quickly triage whatever I can. And of course, get right back in the flow protocol because that is really what, what, it, what it does. Now, if something is very severe, let's say you've gotten to a place where you know, you're having multiple symptoms at the same time and your PMS is very significant. And remember, PMS is something that if untreated can increase the risk for the big four diseases of inflammation, heart disease, diabetes, um, um, sorry, I'm just also trying to read your questions at the same time, heart disease, diabetes, cancer, and dementia. So your PMS is no laughing matter and something that we should take immediate action on. So if you have one symptom, you can use a hack, you know, and kind of get right back on in the flow. If you have multiple symptoms simultaneously, it's very likely that you have some degree of estrogen overload or progesterone insufficiency, and you really need to do the full work of the protocol. You've got to do the first three steps before you can do the, the sort of cycle syncing kind of maintenance uh, process with your food. You've got to address your blood sugar. You've got to address your adrenals. You've got to address your estrogen elimination systems and pathways. And you've got to do that in the right sequence with the right foods. And so if, so that's kind of the checklist that you want to go to is, you know, how many symptoms are there? How, if it's one, great. If it's more than one, not great. Um, how bad is that symptom on a scale of one to 10? You know, if you're like, um, five to six, five to seven even, try one of the hacks we talked about today. If you're multiple symptoms and they're all acute, like seven to 10 range, then it's you know time to get right back into the protocol from the beginning, start at the beginning. Um, it's really important to give your body the, the actual foundational piece. And then you know look at the things that you did or didn't do that you now know are messing with your endocrine system. Um, so I want to talk about one more thing and then I want to share my little surprise for you. So I also want to talk about the emotional causes of PMS because, you know, we call PMS premenstrual syndrome, but I really think that when we look at the energetic or the emotional causes of PMS, what we really should be calling it is and renaming it, and I said this on a Facebook Live with Teen Vogue recently, um, is prioritizing myself week, right? If you have premenstrual syndrome, it is very likely due to the lack of prioritizing myself uh, that has led you to some of those things that we just ran through in the checklist that you may have done or not done because you're busy over giving, giving too much to everyone else. And that's a common, and not just to other people, to things, you know, for example, um, you know, my weak spot, I think because I grew up in New England and there's like this puritanical work ethic up there, kind of, I think it's in the water supply, you know, I always have to watch myself because I have like a default setting to like, War, like doing too much work like I just oh I'm free let me do some work <laughs> not like oh I'm free let me have some fun like I, I've I've had to consciously learn how to not default into hyper work mode all the time so um, but that's a place where again I'll ask myself that question like did I slide into too much working and did I not prioritize my self-care enough because that's one of those pieces of the PMS conversation. It isn't just about the micronutrient deficiencies. It isn't just about the hormonal imbalance. It's also about the way we're relating to ourselves. You know, and when I say that, I mean, the degree to which you have a loving, compassionate, responsive relationship with yourself. 
you know, and I'm just pausing there. I'm just like feeling into my heart. I'm feeling into your hearts. It's just like, a, you know, the we are conditioned to be very self-critical, very like, you know, you crack the whip. I read a quote once from a, um, a beautiful book of poetry. I will source the authoress's name. And uh, she said, there's no greater beating than the fine lashing of a woman's tongue upon her own mind. I read that when I was like in high school. I'll say that again. There's no greater beating than the fine lashing of a woman's tongue upon her own mind. Okay? So energetically, emotionally with PMS, there's something about the self-criticism there that is an inverted response to things that you're not liking about your life, right? It's not, so, and that's the other thing I think that the luteal phase offers is it's like it brings you sort of the, the in order for you to make progress in your life, you have to go from phases of feeling content, right? Contentment about, oh, everything's great, I don't want to change anything, to it's time for change, and then you become discontented, right? You have a little discomfort. So if there's also discomfort, you're irritated about a situation, you, you feel like you're, you know, you, you no longer like where you're living, you're no longer like your job, or it's, and it's, a, it's over and over, like month over month, where you're having every time you enter the luteal phase, you feel the same way about a situation. So, you know, this is like the deeper dive with the emotional cause at a very high level, you know, it's just, did you prioritize your self-care enough this month? And if not, you might feel a little one symptom crop up for you. But if it's chronic and you're having multiple symptoms and you're having the same frustration about a situation month over month, your PMS week, your luteal phase week is an opportunity for you to really look at that and get honest about what it is that you need instead of inverting that frustration and turning it upon yourself and being self-critical about, oh, if I could just, you know, be happy or more positive about this situation instead of maybe then saying, you know what, yeah, this is a situation I want to create change around and what are the steps I'm going to take to make that change? Because of course, when we start cycle syncing, we can actually put those plans into action really well. So just wanted to share that piece too, because I think that with PMS, you know, it's an opportunity. It's an opportunity to look at the root causes. It's an opportunity to look at where you are in the creative process of your, you know, of addressing aspects of your life. Um, it's, it's not your body trying to slow you down. It's your body trying to help you do the right thing sooner so you get to accelerate everything that you want in your life, whether that be feeling good and moving in the direction of your dreams, it all comes through that relationship with your body and the self-care that you're bringing. So PMS is really just a great opportunity if it's happening for you to recognize that, that um, making changes, having a better relationship with your body um, is something that's going to help you live the life that you want. So <clears throat> I wanted to... Um, share something because I know that PMS is such a big deal I want to offer you guys the opportunity to do the monthly flow program um, because PMS is such a serious thing um, you know and it does it, according to the National Institute of Health's biocycle study that was published a decade ago um, increase the likelihood for big diseases of inflammation um, the longer it goes untreated. If you're having multiple symptoms of PMS, if it's chronic, if you've been using the MyFlow tracker, if you've been trying a bunch of things and you haven't done the monthly flow program, this is the program that I launched this company with five years ago. This is the flagship program that puts period conditions into remission naturally. This is the thing that's gonna really address the root causes. And I want you to do it because you need to do the foundational pieces in the right sequence to actually transform your hormonal health and make PMS a thing of the past. So I wanted to give you a great bonus surprise. And, and also some of you on this have been writing to me that it's not just that you're dealing with PMS, you have heavy bleeding, missing periods, you have all sorts of other things going on. 
this is the comprehensive program that that is how I do you know get the protocol to you um, and I want you to have access to it so I'm gonna give you a special opportunity today if you uh, purchase the monthly flow program uh, today there's gonna be a link below um, you're going to be able to access the get me in the flow fast package because that's what I want I want you to get in the flow faster so the first bonus is going to be the four-day hormone detox so important for you to ha just have four give me four days if you're at all skeptical that that three months will completely transform your period issues give me those four days with the four-day hormone detox and you will see very quickly how responsive your body is hormonally to food as medicine and then then I don't won't need to tell you anymore why you you want to be continuing on with that um, it will help you with your PMS in the short term and it will really set you up to do the monthly flow program really well um, I'm also going to give you my personal home medicine cabinet guide so if you liked me sharing all my little products with you today there's a whole list of things that I like to keep at hand that I would love to share with you and that'll be part of the gift um, and then you're also going to get my favorite cycle rituals guide um, which is how do you work with each week of the cycle um, with different tinctures and elixirs and and rituals to really help optimize your ability to access your inner wisdom and your intuition each week of the month and I really love these these are what I personally do and I want to share them with you and then the last thing, a lot of gifts, but I re that's because I, re I love your ovaries so much. I want them to feel better and I want you to do the monthly flow program because it will help you. Um, and so the last one is this, uh, a, a masterclass, it's an audio format um, about, uh, it's called Your Happiness is in Your Hormones. It's my premier masterclass on mood and hormones and what to do if mood issues from anxiety to depression to irritability are plaguing you this will be just extra material for you to have in your arsenal to help you achieve results faster this is you know a hundred dollar bonus that you're going to be getting um, for free when you purchase the monthly flow program today so i really want you to um, to have access to it because it's just going to help you make this make the changes i mean fundamentally one of the things that I remember when I was going through this process myself is that I felt alone and I thought it was so strange that there was like nowhere I could go to have someone just tell me what to do and lay it out step by step and I, I thought if I could figure this out I really want to build that for women and for womankind um, and so I have and so there's just no reason for you at this point to do this on your own to feel like you have to you know Google this article and that article and piece it together there is finally a place that has the comprehensive protocol for you to get from where you are with your period and your symptoms to where you want to be which is thriving and feeling great and that is your birthright that is your hormonal destiny that is your biological design and I want you to have access to it so, um, you know, you follow the link below and place your order and then you're going to get an email receipt and then you're going to submit your order to support at flowliving.com and you're going to get all the free goodies that I talked about um, today. And I would really love for you to share this video with your friends. Every woman has PMS, unfortunately, so please share. Give that good ovary karma. Spread that good ovary karma around. Let other women know that there is a whole other way to go about relating to their bodies. Um, and I truly hope to see a lot more of you um, over the weekend on the membership side of our website after you join the monthly flow program i'll be watching i'll be looking out for your questions in the forum and i'm really excited about you know you transforming your health in the next 30 to 60 days it's really exciting just how little time it takes when you really do the monthly flow program how tremendously different you can feel in such a short period of time it's almost unbelievable, except that I've been doing it now for almost 20 years with women, and I know that this is possible for you, so just start. And that's why I put this 
get me in the flow fast package together to just just sweeten sweeten it up a little bit so that you be willing to take the chance to start now um, I want to invite you lovingly into a whole new paradigm one where you can feel really good all the time um, yes and I'm sure there's some women here are commenting about how monthly flow helped them too and you know yes you don't have to just take it from me that it works it it works um, so I am so glad we had this time together today um, I will be sit, coming back live next week, uh, same time, same day, and talking about something else equally juicy for us as women who are wanting to live uh, an embodied, self-aware, and healthy life. And uh, we'll share more together then. Until then, take really good care of your ovaries. Take advantage of the special offer today. Follow the link below. Come join me on the Monthly Flow program. And uh, I'll talk to you guys soon. Thank you. Bye.